What's up, college football fans? Don't forget to check out and order your copy of Stiff Arming Football Myths, our latest football game plan book. So go on our website at footballgameplan.com slash books and get your copy. We have these available in paperback as well as in PDF form. Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bringing you another edition of Get Coached Up, where today I'm on the campus here at Fordham University in the Bronx, getting coached up by head football coach Joe Moorhead. So let's go into the field house to see what he can coach me up on today. I'm sitting here with head football coach Joe Moorhead of Fordham University. Coach, what am I getting coached up on today? Well, we've uh been fortunate enough to have a lot of success offensively over the past three years here in the run game and in the pass game. You know, set school records and league records for points scored and passing yardage and rushing yardage with, with Chase and Carl and Koontz. But uh, you know, we're going to talk about a uh, drop back pass concept uh, that we call scissors. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll go through that. We'll talk about how we install what our reads are, what the progressions are, and uh, go to a little bit of film on it. We'll get close now, let's do it. Oh. All right, Coach, what we got? All right. Today we're going to install one of our uh, most productive uh, five-step drop-back plays in our system. Uh, I've run it since my time as a coordinator at, uh, at Akron and moving on to UConn and now here at, uh, at Fordham. And it, it is our scissors concept. And in our scissors concept, or our scissors play, falls within our uh, flood concept. So in, in, in our pass game structure, every single one of our routes falls into a concept or a family. So that way our kids know what the defining characteristic uh, of okay. each concept is, and instead of rote memorization, uh, they are conceptually understanding where the play fits within the concept, and once they understand what the concept is, what the play is, then there's rules that go within each uh, each pass route. Okay. So in our scissors concept, it's a, uh, our scissors plays in, in a, the flood concept, which is a, a five step under center. For us, it's, it's three step, because we're always in the gun. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a, uh, a five step drop back pass play, and the concept of scissors. So we can run our scissors, and as you know from seeing us play, we, run, we don't run a ton of formations. We run two by two, we run three by one, we run a little bit of empty. So within our scissors concept, and talking about the, uh, the conceptual teaching of it in, in, instead of memorization, our kids don't understand or memorize plays by position. So the Z has this, the X has this, the Y has this. We want our kids to understand the concept of the play. And once we under they understand the concept of the play, no matter where they line up on the field or what position they're in, they know they know what the route is based on where they're aligned as opposed to what position they're playing. So when we talk about the scissors concept, front side one on scissors, meaning to the field, all right, his route is a 14 yard, what we call take two post. Okay. So front side one is gonna run a, what we call a take two post. So against a, a one high coverage look, he's gonna run a go through the outside shoulder of the corner versus one high, okay? Against two high, all right, he's gonna run a 14 yard post through the inside shoulder of the corner, all right? So that's against two high, all right? And this is also against man to man here, okay? So that's his rule there, 14 yard take two post, all right, run and go against one high through the outside shoulder of the corner, run a post against two high, uh, a, uh, whether it's Quarters are not going. If it's cover two, it's good. This isn't a route that converts. Okay. So one high is a go, two high is a post. All right. now, he, now he's crossing face. Right? He's crossing okay. face against two high uh, with access. Uh, like you said, running the go against one high. Okay. Front side number two to the field. Okay. He's going to run a 12 yard corner route. So he's going to stick in for three steps. He's going to push up the 12 yards. And at 12 yards, he's going to plant his inside foot and make a 45 degree cut. Okay to the sideline. So we don't talk about yardage, we talk about depth and we talk about angle. Okay. All right, so front side two is gonna have a 12 yard corner. And as you see here, front side three, it's gonna be one of two routes depending on whether you're on the line of scrimmage or if you're in the backfield. Mm -hmm. So front side three 
Here in this instance is a running back. He's in the backfield, all right, so he's gonna have a check swing route. And we'll talk about what happens when he's on the line of scrimmage when we get to another formation. All right, so he's the check swing. So as you can see here, the defining characteristic of the flood concept is we're trying to insert three levels on the sideline. A deep level, an intermediate level, and a short level. Okay, and that is where we're going to go all right, if we have access to the field. And by access, I mean off quarter, not a cloud or not press man. Okay, so if we have access to the field, we're reading this side, and the quarterback's going to take a three step drop. Okay, his first read, number one, is going to be the post or the go. All right, if that guy opens up off of one hitch and he's either run by the corner or the intersection of this thing that we talk about reading the intersection of the flat defender. If the intersection is screwed up and then that guy gets cut loose, we're going to take three steps, one hitch, and we're going to throw the deep ball. Okay. If that guy is not open off of his first pitch, on his second hitch, we're going to find the flat defender. All right, so in this instance here, I have quarters drawn up. All right, so it should play out like that with the DB. So we're saying now, if we take two posts, both of those guys are out there and he's uncovered, now we're finding the flat defender. Okay, so he's going to go two hitches to the corner unless the flat defender gets underneath it. Then on his third hitch, he's going to get it down to the back. All right, so this is one off of one hitch. All right, to the corner off of the flat defender on two hitches. All right, to the flat on three hitches. All right, then it's run the throw away. Okay, so that is against access. If we get no access, meaning a cloud to the field, okay, that is going to get the quarterback to go backside of his read progression. Okay, and as you can see here, backside one, and once I talk, I'll race this and we'll draw up another formation, you'll see what I'm talking about with the, with the conceptual understanding of the route. Backside number one is going to be a 12 yard dig route. Okay, all right, at 12 yards and square. Backside two, now it depends, am I, in, am I on the line of scrimmage or am I in the backfield? In this instance here, because we're in a two by two formation, backside number two is, is on the line of scrimmage, he's not the backfield. So he's gonna have a five yard whip route. Okay, so in this instance now, I have it drawn up against quarters, I'm gonna erase that, okay? With the corner to corner, okay? Safety to safety. All right, now I'm gonna put it up against cover two because this is where it would take us backside. Okay, all right. So now we're saying it's cover two, you got a half a funnel corner there, you got a half player there, you got a half player there, and you got a cloud player there. So as our quarterback takes his drop and we read through the goalpost to ascertain what the coverage is, he sees his safety split. He knows we don't have the look that we want to the front side. Right, put this guy outside because we would be inside the reason. Okay, so he knows we have no access to the field now. We have a cloud corner. So now he's gonna come back side, all right, and now his read, our front side reads are numbers, our back side reads are letters. All right, sorry. All right, it's A to B, all right, off of the backside inside backer. So he's gonna take three steps and one hitch and look for the whip route. All right, if the whip round is open because this guy drops out of there, we're gonna throw the whip round, okay? If the wheel drops down and he ends up playing the whip, now we're gonna throw the dig, all right, in this window here, all right, between the mic and the wheel. All right, so that's with no access to field. All right, our third prerogative, or our third factor, is if we get man to man. So we have uh, not a zone coverage, we see that it's some form of man-to-man -man not being blitz zero, but okay. where blitz zero would get out of this right. and get into something else. And I could get into the specifics of the protection, but that would be a whole other that'd be a whole other <laughs> right. day for us. So, so for simplicity's sake, when we get man-to-man, -man, man rules override zone rules. Okay. So when it's man, we're looking to our runaway routes. And our runaway routes here are the corner, he's running away, all right? The whip route, he's running away. And then dig route, he's running away. So, right? so against zone coverage, access to the field, it's three and one. Post, the corner, the flat. All right? If we get no access, we get a cloud to the field, it's three and one to the whip. All right? Three and two to the uh, to the dig. If we get man to man, the turn that we use is off to match up. We're looking for the furthest off coverage, and if we get no off coverage, where do we have the best matchup where our guy will be able to run away? Okay, and I'm not going to draw the defense up because we did that on the last one. Okay, so now we're in a three by one formation. Nothing changes from a concept standpoint. Front side one, front side two, front side three. Back side one denoted by an underline, back side two denoted by an underline. Okay, so now it doesn't change. We call the formation, I shouldn't say call, they see it on the sideline with the signals. Mm -hmm. Okay, they get the play and they're not worried about I'm the X, I'm the Z, I'm the Y. Okay, in this instance here, front side one, 14 yard take two post or a go. Front side two, 12 yard corner route, front side three. All right, front side three has to be aware. Am I on the line of scrimmage or on the backfield? All right, front side three now is on the line of scrimmage. So he's a five yard flat route, okay? Back side one, 
Okay? 12 yard dig route, that doesn't change. Backside two, on the line of scrimmage or in the backfield. When he was on the line of scrimmage, it was a whip where we were trying to affect the will. Now he's backside two, he's in the backfield, now he has what we call a read route. Right, but he's affecting the same person, and the quarterback's read doesn't change. Okay? So now, we have field and boundary receivers, so those guys don't flip. Okay? So now you erase it, and you say, all right, what's the conceptual teaching of it? Okay, now when we flip formations, and we go to a three by one with a single tight end backside, now we have guys in different positions. Now this is the X who only aligns in that formation to the field because normally he's the boundary receiver. Right. Now the Z is here when normally he's that position, and now the H is front side three when normally he's that position. Okay, now the Y is backside one when he's normally never backside one, and the back and the back is backside two. All right. So what are your rules? Front side one, front side two, front side three, backside one, backside two. All right. All right, and now you, it's not memorizing the play. What does front side one have? Well, it doesn't matter if I'm the X, the Z, the Q, the R, or whatever. Right. Take two posts. All right, front side two, 12 yard corner, front side three, in the line of scrimmage or on the backfield, on the line of scrimmage. All right, four to five yard flat. Backside one, doesn't matter. 12 yard dig. Backside two, on the line or in the backfield, in the backfield. backfield. 12 yard read. Access to the field, one, to two, to three. They saw the flat defender, no access to the field, have a cloud. All right, A to B, off of the backside inside backer. We get man to man, now we have three, three runway routes. One, two, and three, okay? So that's the primary way, so whether we're two by two, three by one, or three by two, it doesn't matter, it's a conceptual teaching. Now, here, yep. the eight, on, on, the, on the out route, the flat yep. route, do you have him, is this like a zone type route, or is he speed out? He's or? not, there's two different ways to do it, I'm sorry. No, 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 no it's okay. If, if the uh, immediacy of the flat route, it, it depends on where he is within the, uh, structure of the progression. Okay. So in this instance, he's third in the progression, one to two to three, so the quarterback's gonna get down to him so he can off take of the his third time. hitch. So he's gonna work up a little bit and bust to the flat lane knowing he's getting up late. He's not gonna necessarily ooze off the ball, but he's gonna work vertical a little bit and then get flat. And some of our other concepts as if we have like a curl flat concept, mm -hmm. and it's a 12 yard hook and a flat. Wow. Now he's number one in the progression. So now he doesn't have the luxury to build up field. He's got to go and stretch the flat defender. All right, and once he does that, so we they know it's a flat route, but because we like so we teach our kids conceptually, they know based on where they are within the construct construct of the stretch or the progression, mm -hmm. you know what, what they're able to do. So that's a good question on uh, on front side threes route route to the flat. He is third in the progression, so he has time to work up field. Okay. okay. We do have a couple variations that we run off of this, where we have uh, what we call. A prefix or a suffix. And essentially meaning we tag the route. So when we just call base scissors without a tag, mm -hmm. we're running the concept. Front side one, front side two, front side three, back side one, back side two. All right, when we when we have it with a tag, uh, it's a certain way for us to switch the stretch up or switch the uh, assignments on the routes. So if we would call, for instance, uh, Something that we run, let's, let's do this one. H scissors, all right? Okay, so now we have a, a suffix, a, a suffix or a prefix tag, all right? So that's telling me when we have a prefix tag on scissors, we're looking to attack a certain coverage. Okay. Uh, a clamp coverage that you see a lot of people running now against mm -hmm. three by one attacks where they're matching this guy up to the field and they're playing quarters concept over top of the right. inside too, or the teams that are really, uh, playing a three roll strong covers where they're playing a thirds concept but the, the majority of the underneath defenders are to the trips. So when we say H scissors, uh, H is telling us who has the whip route. So okay. I'll, put, I'll put this up here out of the, what we call uh, three roll strong. All right, so it's there, it's there, safety rules down there, you got two players there, two players there, and I'll just put the coverage up, okay? So essentially what's happening here is we're telling him front side one doesn't change. Go or post, take two okay. posts. Now that we tag the scissors, H is telling us, because this is our H in our three by one, who's running the whip? So he's gonna run a six yard, five yard whip route. Okay, bad drone there, I'm so I'm gonna fix it, don't like that. All right, he's gonna run a whip route off the first defender head up the inside of him, okay? Since front side two now is running the whip, now front side three has to run the what? 
what's the what's the only part of the concept that we're missing here on the club? Oh, right. The corner. So he's going to run the 12 yard corner. So the construct or the concept of the play hasn't changed. It's still three levels on the sideline, uh -huh. and the read hasn't changed. It's front side one, or it's one off of uh, three and one. It's two off of three and two. It's three off of three and three. But it's a very coverage specific. Uh, uh, construct so, so it, it's a way to switch up how you're dispersing your routes right uh, so it's still it's still three levels okay but the rules don't change if we have access we're gonna work for the front side if we get a cloud and we don't like the access our right, backside ones rules don't change all right, it's 12 yard dig and six yard read so this is a way for us to have a variation of it that's very coverage specific in the sense that hey we still want to run the, the scissors concept this is the coverage that they're showing us with access to the field. What's a different way that we can get to our three by one flood stretch and uh, you know mix up who's running the flat and who's running the court? Okay? Because if you didn't mix this up, no. they'd be in perfect position. They, they, would, they would have more of an opportunity to match this okay. uh, if you ran traditional scissors than not. And also, it's a, a thing that breaks tendency. Right. Now, because we've run so much of this over the years, you start seeing the step by two and three to the flat. Okay. You know, you talk about the uh, you know, passing it off or, or doing some things to take it away. You know, it's just another tool in our arsenal to, to get to the things we want. So that's one of our variations is that if we have a prefix, whoever is tagged runs a whip, and the inside receiver who's not tagged, all right, he now has to subsequently run the court. Okay. okay. So that's that's a good way for us. And like I said, we've had some very good success against what we call clamp coverage or three insert strong. Uh, switching up is essentially in three the three insert strong coverage, a lot of teams are inning and out in this, meaning he'll take the first low inside and cut and right. he'll take the first inside cut and now you got leverage on this route here and you got a pretty good route there. Okay. So that's with a prefix. All right. If we go with a suffix, mm -hmm. all right, meaning scissors, and then we add a tag to the end of it, uh, so let's just say in this instance X, okay? This is what we can run out of two by two, all right, and still get to our stretch, all right, but get it in a different means. We're still, it's, we're still in the flood concept, we're still gonna run our scissors concept, it's just how are we getting the people to the flood, mm -hmm. and how are we getting the people to the dig read concept backside. Okay. So when we get into our two by two, all right, and the other thing with, with uh, you know, a lot of the gun teams is back placement. Back to the field equals this, back to the boundary equals this. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're having a, a good self-scout in, in balance and understanding of where we put the back and what that means to what type of play we're calling. All right, so when we tag scissors with an X, just like when we had a prefix tag and that told us who's running the whip, right? When we have a suffix tag at the end of the play, that's telling us who's running the crosser. Okay. So now we go front side one, front side two, there is no front side three. So that means front side three's gotta come from the back side of the formation. So front side one, take two posts. Front side two, 12 yard corner. All right, there is no back side three, so this should alert our guys that something's up. So they've heard the X tag. Okay, so that tells us this guy is on a six yard crosser, all right? He will stair step versus man, but now he is becoming the third part of the flood stretch to the field. So the read doesn't change for the quarterback. It's one, it's two, it's three, okay? So now they, they understand this. He's been tagged, so he's the crosser. He's out of the backside progression, okay? So now that makes him, since he's gone, backside number one. And what does backside number one have? On scissors, a 12 yard dig, all right? So he's gonna outstem, he's gonna push up, and he's gonna have a 12 yard dig, okay? So he's out of the equation, that makes him one, that makes him what? So two. two. The, the, read, out. the read route, yeah, backside two, in the backfield, five yard read route, okay? And you get a nice little triangle stretch here backside that we run, so, and the rules remain the same. If you have access to the field, it's one, two, three. All right, if you get cloud in the field, which is normally cover two or three real strong, uh, you're going A to B, uh, read the read the dig, all right? and if you get man to man, now we really like this oh, as a runaway, right, a runaway yeah. route. And you've seen a Jala catch, uh, let's say a hundred, that's <laughs> hyperbole, but he <laughs> okay. cut a good amount of, of routes running away. So now you have a great runaway route, a great runaway route, and a great runaway route there. So without getting into more specifics with the protection and, and, and things like that, that is, uh, you know, 
a play in our flood family of routes. Uh, five step, the play is scissors. Uh, these are the defining characteristics or rules of the play. Uh, and those are our variations. Uh, I mean, this is why you guys put up a lot of points. You <laughs> gave a lot of teams yeah. problems, Coach. And I, I really appreciate you taking time to do this. And I definitely got coached up. And I'm always nervous in the back. And these routes versus linebackers yeah. are deadly. And, and you guys have a good one in the back for you and Chase. Now, fitting that he's going to be running away from people having to chase him. So. Absolutely. We talked about offensive philosophy and, and the number three tenet is get your speed and space. Mm -hmm. And anytime we can create an advantageous matchup with a, with a player like Chase or one of our speed guys on the edge against someone that they may be able to run away from, we feel pretty good about that. Cool. Appreciate, I mean, appreciate that. everything. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.